Hello and welcome to our second podcast in this employability series. My name's Adam Bashtoan. I am a career consultant here at Aston University. And in today's podcast, we're talking with alumni, shining a light on how our focus on careers helps our students find graduate level work. Aston University has been awarded the University of the Year runner-up for graduate employment in the Times Sunday University Guide this year. And our careers and placements team uh, won Best Placement Service uh, in the NUE Awards 2022. We've got great connections with uh, local and national employers. I was part of a exclusive uh, webinar with KPMG just yesterday but we've got a range of employers and a range of activities that employers engage with our students whether it's virtual webinars workshops or the recruitment fair and employers would include Accenture who teach on some of our degree programs here BMW Deloitte PwC and many many more we know that the uh, job market today is very competitive and that building a professional network can help students find graduate work as a university, we take employability very seriously, and an Aston degree can help students build the knowledge and practical skills to develop their career. If you find this discussion interesting and would like to know more about how we support students, you can visit aston.ac.uk forward slash careers forward slash postgraduate. So, hello, David and Fumi. I'll be asking you some questions about your careers today. Uh, David, just wanted to start with yourself. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about you? Where are you from? What course did you study? And what are you doing in your career now? Sure. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me on this Eastern University Employability Podcast. It's truly an honor to share my experience with you all. I'm David Joshi. I'm from India. I, I recently graduated from uh, Eastern University with an MBA degree. And I also did a specialization in energy management with the help of uh, Aston's summer exchange program. Currently, I work for Coventry City Council as an energy project manager. Uh, Coventry City Council is a local authority uh, based in West Midlands region. It's basically a public sector organization. As an, uh, as an energy project manager, my role includes uh, delivery of uh, various renewable energy projects across the estate and we are just aiming to reduce all our carbon uh, uh, reductions. Uh, it's really good to be part of such an excite, uh, exciting team to deliver net zero targets. How did you find that role? Oh, it's exceptionally amazing and challenging as well at the same time, because I am from energy background and I do love uh, uh, renewable energy innovation and all the projects. Uh, and it's it's really great to see how people work in the UK compared to where I come from. So it's really a different experience, a challenging experience on a different scale. And I would really love to work more and uh, learn more about how the future follows. Interesting, you mentioned, you mentioned the different in cultural approaches here. So my father was an international student at Aston <laughs> as well. So I have a little bit of insight. How did you find that in terms of your career development while studying here and the differences with recruitment with employers? So initially, I was fortunate enough to get a chance to work on different volunteering role while working uh, while academic while my journey at Aston. So I was also a volunteer at uh, TEDx Aston University Society, and I was a I did my internship within Aston from Aston University uh, as a for one of their uh, sustainability projects. So that helped me to get my job where I work for. So it's really a smooth transition for me, to be very honest, it has been because uh, Aston gave me the opportunity which I wanted. I utilize it the, it the most at the best which I can. And all in all, I tried my time. I, I utilized my time at Aston and which helped me to get into my current role. Super. Was well, that the Aston graduate advantage program that you did the place uh, I, I did uh, Aston uh, uh, I work for Professor Prasant Tade on one of the uh, sustainability project project called low carbon SME so that is funded by that was funded by European Regional Development Fund so, so that we basically help number of SMEs around West Midland region 
providing them a free uh, energy advice and trying to encourage them to uh, utilize circular economy model in their business operations and help them to improve their profit margins and so on and so forth. Thanks very much. Boomi, would like to ask a bit about yourself as well. Where are you from? What are you doing at the moment? What did you study at Aston? Thank you very much, Adam. My name is Fumilaya Obanwa. I'm from Nigeria. I studied information systems and business analysis at Aston University. Currently, I'm now a staff at Aston University. So I um, work on the AGA team, providing support to students in terms of academic support, also doing some form of teaching, supervision, just every support that students will need on their journey in harnessing all the values that Aston is bringing to the table. So that's what I do currently. Good to have you on board, Aston. Thank you. How did you, how are you finding the role as well? Very interesting because I was once a student on one side, now I'm on the other side, supporting students on the same journey that I embarked on. So it's really very interesting. Um, the team is really nice and um, this role is, it's kind of, um, it aligns with my career path in the sense that I was part of the Aston Global Advantage and I had the opportunity to get a job on the Aston exclusive roles, working on one of the Aston projects, Pathways to Enterprise in Future. And on that project, we were supporting, providing employability skills and entrepreneurial skills. So I had the opportunity to work with students. It was while on that role, I realized that I had a passion to support. It developed my skills. And when I saw that opening, I applied. And it's very great that I see students going on a journey that I have gone through using my experience, my learnings, and they're always very excited to see that a former student is now a staff tutoring and supporting. So it's really very exciting. Love what you're saying there. And I kind of want to delve more into like your career aspirations and how it's all going. It seems like you get a lot of fulfillment from the role though, because you're helping those children to, yeah. you know, where they're coming from in terms of what development they need. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that from your own time. What were some of the challenges or barriers that you had to overcome and how are you helping current students, students with those? Okay, I am an international student and coming into a new environment, just getting to understand first and foremost, if we're looking at the academic journey, it was kind of different from the way we studied or learned back home. And that is what I've also recognized with students now. It's different. That's with the academics. So it's the learning in, and that's the good thing about Aston. Aston has identified that international students are coming in. They will have some of these shocks and they have put some of these mitigants in place. So you have an academic support tutor that is always there to answer your questions, to handhold you, whatever the blocks are to overcome them. That's with the academic journey. Now with the employment journey in getting a job, it is also very different. And something that helped me was the fact that Aston is very int intentional about employability. So even with the courses, they were very, very developed my skills. And personally, I did information systems and business analysis. I've always wanted to teach, wanted to lecture and working with the career team helped me to identify some transferable skills that I had. And that's some support I'm giving to students right now to say, you might not have this, but you have transferable skills, which UK employers are very big on. So helping students to identify what they are good at, piloting them or handholding them, directing them to opportunities that they never would have thought that they qualified for. Yeah. Now you, you absolutely shine a light on the main challenges. A lot of students are aware that in the UK, a lot of employers are very open yeah. in terms of what degree you studied. Yeah. And they focus a lot on the soft skills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of students struggle to articulate. They exactly. have the already. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just articulating it. I remember when I did my first interview with the PEF project, Aston, I have never done project work. But the fact that I had very good communication skills, I had very good stakeholder engagement skills. I understood how to translate, identifying a problem to solution. And that was what the employer was looking for. And I was employed. Same thing with the role year. I have never worked with students. Just my ability to articulate those soft skills that I had, my passion, and relating some of my past experiences, which careers and placements helped me to put together in applying for this role. Sounds like you're doing supreme work. Yeah, very well. <laughs>
David, would you mind sharing maybe some of the challenges or obstacles you've faced in your current job? Uh, reflecting on my this current job scenario, I would say it's really difficult for me to, first of all, do the transition from where I come from, Indian culture, to the UK work culture. First of all, I was more of relying on the formal job titles and organizational work culture, but the UK work culture is more around inclusivity, collaboration, and all other kind of things. So it's they put more less emphasis on formal job titles and all these kind of things. So it kind of encouraged me to work more and do more and contribute more uh, and uh, value addition work kind of things which I do for them. So th this is really good for me. It can be very transformative <laughs> yeah. for international students, yeah. again, where you were used to very prescriptive ways mm -hmm. of working. Mm -hmm. And now we're asking you, can you influence a peer who you don't have line management over to work with you or you work with them? So this is really one of the good, uh, good I mean, observation, which I am I'm, I'm having right now. So in, in my workspace, our line manager or our colleague don't do micromanagement. It was totally contrasting from where I come from, to be very honest, because I, that work culture is more around uh, great work commitment and working for longer working hours. So this particular thing, it kind of balance work, work life balance is there at this 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 particular time. So it's really good to have uh, all in all uh, uh, this learning. Any other big surprises that came out when you started working? Most biggest surprises was uh, work life balance. To be very honest, I would not afraid of saying this again and again. Uh, because the work-life balance is like I can do uh, working from home, flexible working hours. Uh, I mean, there is a clear distinction. Uh, 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 there is a clear demarcation between your personal life and your work life. They won't ask you to uh, work for longer working hours, despite there are a few pending works. But they they also do respect your personal life, and uh, it's really good to have uh, that working life, which helped me to. Uh, I encourage people more about uh, uh, keep their well-being and uh, uh, do uh, we'll spend some time for their personal life as well. Absolutely. I, I took a, a few students on a trip to visit Goldman Sachs' office and all the students were really excited to go, of course, but their imagination is that, oh, if you're working at a firm like this, you must be doing 70 hours, 80 hours a week. And when we spoke to the people there, we've got two alumna working at Goldman's. So they were like, no, I can leave early. I can go to the gym if I want. You're very much in control of your own time and that autonomy. Is that something, this might be unfair, but do you prefer that style to being micromanaged? <laughs> uh, to be very honest, no, because if I would like to do one particular task, I would like to do it my, my own way because I'm, I'm sure that with that particular approach, I am responsible for that action. And if I am success, if I'm getting success or I'm getting failure, I'm the sole responsible for that particular thing. So I would surely give my 200% rather than giving just less than 100%. So I would prefer to have work done in my way and then probably achieve that success and give credit to my team. Uh, yeah. so <laughs> still like the control rather than sort of spreading yeah. that. <laughs> and Bumi, I think you're in a great position. I wanted to ask you if you had any advice for current students as well, what would that be? I would say for current students at Aston, use all the resources available. Secondly, um, transferable skills. Do not ignore whatever projects you've done in class. Like I mentioned, the modules are very relatable. Whatever projects or coursework you've done, it can go on your CV. It counts for something. So be very intentional with whatever you do on campus. It counts. That's the advice I'll give to students. Yeah. Super. So thanks very much for that answer, Fumi. Um, that brings this episode to an end. I'd like to thank David and Fumi for your contributions and time and coming in and talk to us today about your careers and insights with employability. As a reminder, if you'd like to know more information about how we support students here at Aston with their employability journey, you can visit us at aston.org.
ac.uk forward slash careers forward slash postgraduate.